Another uh, area that we get questions on a lot with regards to terrains is boundary options. Now, you've already seen me in a couple of videos change the edge method to control the boundary. And you've really got four ways to control the boundary. Uh, the first one is none. You can just say, I don't, I don't you know, I don't I want to use any method. And this, of course, gives you the least amount of control. There are two other methods that you can use. One is called slivers. Now, what slivers does, it removes all the long, thin external triangles. Um, but now this is, the, the odd thing about this is it's based on a formula that's hard-coded within the software, which basically means nobody really knows how it works. Um, you would really want a little more control than that, and to get more control than that, you would use the max edge length. And this is where you can give a specified distance, and you can say, I don't want any external triangles longer than 50 feet or longer than 50 meters or whatever the case may be. Those, that gives you a little more control. But if you want the most control, you actually want to use a boundary. And when you use a boundary, then all triangles outside of the boundary feature are removed. And again, as I said, this gives you most control. Now, we've added two new options into, terrain, um, into the terrain tools back in SS4, and they're also in Open Rose Designer. And that is the add boundary and remove boundary. Now the add boundary, when you go to add a boundary to terrain, you get three options. Extract graphic, add boundary, and add rule boundary. The extract graphic really doesn't do anything but extract a, a graphical 3D line string. Um, in other words, it looks at your terrain, and it looks at the outermost edges of it, and it basically reads that and creates you a microstation shape or a microstation line string. It's not linked to the terrain in any way. It's just a quick way to get an outer graphical boundary from a terrain. Another option is the add boundary. Now what this does, it actually creates a non-graphical boundary feature within the terrain and it basically overrules or overrides all other trimming methods. And finally you have what's called the add ruled boundary and this is very much like the add boundary except it creates an editable graphical boundary that is ruled to the terrain. Um, it also overrules all other trimming methods. And of course along with the add boundary tool you get the remove boundary which basically just removes any type of boundary, uh, whether graphical or non-graphical, from the specified terrain. So again, you got the add boundary, which basically uh, add a boundary overrules all other trimming methods, and it provides the greatest control. Remove boundary allows you to remove that from the terrain in order to add additional data. So let's go take a, a, a look here. I've got a, something real simple that I put together and I think it just shows the these different options uh, fairly you know fairly well. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create a terrain uh, from elements right and so I've just got these few elements around this little intersection. Well the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over and at this point I've got no boundary options so you get all these extraneous triangles. So I'm gonna the first option I'm gonna use is the sliver option. Okay, and as I said, the parameters here are hard coded in the software, and you'll see it gets a lot rid of a lot of those long, thin triangles that you get. If you want more control, you can set this to max edge length. Okay, and then again, by setting this value, this is the the maximum size value or maximum size triangle length that it would create externally. So again, this allows you to get it down even even more. But as I mentioned earlier, if you want the maximum amount of control, uh, what you need to do is add a, a, a boundary. Now, let's look at a couple situations of how this might work and how it might not work. So let's say I wanted to remove those extraneous triangles there. So I'm going to try to use the edit terrain model. But the edit terrain model will not let me edit that terrain. You can see it keeps telling me there this is not an editable terrain. The reason for that is because this is a ruled terrain. It's ruled to these graphical elements. 
And so we won't let you edit that because it's rule. Because we know that if you make a bunch of edits, as soon as somebody moves one of those lines, you're gonna you're gonna lose everything. So we won't let you edit a ruled a dynamic ruled terrain. So one of the things that you can do is you can disable or even remove that um, that rule there. So let's come over, let's select the terrain, and I'm just going to disable it. I'm going to show you one of the workflows you might run into. So I'm going to disable it. Well, now that I have disabled it, it will actually allow me to edit it. And you can see it's allowing me to select that now. So I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to remove, uh, I'm going to delete some of these extraneous triangles right there. So I'm just going to delete them all the way down and give me a give me a nice right triangle there okay now let's just say I only wanted to do that one now I'm gonna come back over and I'm gonna put the rule back on okay so now it is once again a dynamically ruled terrain my triangles are missing from that uh, that northwest corridor there but once again let's make a change to the terrain let's see what happens so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add a break line all right, so I'm just going to put in a, a quick line there. I'm going to do a profile by constant elevation. And you can see the 3D green line there. And then I'm going to come my terrain tools here, and I'm just going to add a feature. Okay, so I am going to identify the terrain, identify that break line, and just say add that to my terrain. Now you notice the terrain updated to include the break line. But I want you to also notice that in that northwest corner, the triangles that I deleted came back. So that's the problem with using these, these edit tools in conjunction with a, uh, with a ruled terrain, is that as soon as that terrain regenerates itself for some reason, in this case we added a break line, those deleted triangles are just going to, to come back. So let's look at another option uh, to do something very similar. So again, I'm going to remove the rule or I'm going to disable the rule. I'm going to come back and I'm going to remove these these triangles here, okay? Just like I did, just like I did previously. But this time, instead of immediately adding the rule back, I'm going to come in and add a boundary, okay? And so as I mentioned earlier, we get three options: extract graphic, add boundary, and add rule boundary. And we'll do this uh, a couple of ways, okay? Again, um the, as I mentioned, the extract graphic is just going to create a graphical element. It doesn't really create any kind of rule or any kind of boundary. I'm going to do an add boundary. All right. So I'm going to just select that terrain, and it's going to look at all the edges of it right now, and it's going to add a boundary to it. Now, the way that I can tell that it's got a boundary is if I go look at the properties now, you'll see the edge method says from boundary. So now I know, okay, yes, this has got a boundary on it. Okay. Now, the neat thing about this using this method is I'm going to come in and I'm going to add um, some more uh, break lines to it. Okay, so let's come back in here. Let's uh, let's create a couple of additional break lines, just like we did earlier. Okay, and we'll come in here to add features. We'll identify the terrain. We'll update those two there. And we'll add. Now, see, this time we added break lines, but notice the triangles didn't come back. The reason they didn't come back is because there's a boundary. Okay, so that's the you know that's the difference there. Whereas before we didn't have the boundary, now we do, and the boundary says don't go outside of me. And so that gives us a, a, again just showing you something you do. Now, one other way that this works too, and and I'll just show you this using another option. So notice here we've got our same uh, terrain here. I've got it set to max triangle length. Okay. So I want to come over here and let's go to add boundary. And so we'll just come in here and I want to at this time add a ruled boundary. Okay. And so uh, I could set a feature definition if I wanted to. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to add a ruled boundary. All right. Now, I've added the boundary. If I go select the terrain, you can say it says from boundary, just like it did previously. Now the difference here is that I've added a graphical element. I can actually see the boundary as a graphic, so I can actually grab that now and um, and actually move this around to control it. 
okay and this this works really nice and really well to control exactly what you want to uh, you know to where those triangles uh, don't show up outside that so again that's the that's just a different way of doing the same thing we did earlier it's really no different and again you can see here if I come in and add a break line uh, like we did earlier we'll just do a profile by constant elevation okay we'll create this uh, 3d break line and you'll notice that even if I add this as a feature the terrain is going to regenerate itself, but because I've got a, a, a boundary in there, those external triangles will remain uh, deleted. Okay, so this is just some of the different uh, methodologies that you have for using boundaries and the different benefits. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.